Hello again simulation team. In this video we will make a body. Once the window is open, you'll want to show the primary planes because they'll be useful in defining the, for keeping track of where you are when sketching and defining some extrudes. Now let's select the top plane and create a sketch. Now starting at the origin, we will draw two circles. We will dimension these circles so that the outer diameter is 0.215 meters and the inner diameter is 0 0.2 meters. Once again, we'll change the precision on this dimension so that it reflects what we actually input for the value. So this is the cross section that we want to extrude to make the main rocket body. So go to features, select extrude, and type in 2.0 meters for the depth. Hit enter, and we'll hit the check mark. So there's our body tube. You want to make sure you extrude in the Y direction, which you should be if you're on the top plane. Now let's model the nose cone. Select the front plane for this and create a sketch. Now rocket nose cones are best modeled. So, we'll, so we're going to revolve a cross section that is modeled by several equation driven curves. So to specify an equation driven curve, you go to the spline tool, you select the down arrow that's next to it, and then you click equation driven curve. Now we are going to use the parametric version. If you, where you specify the coordinates x and y as a function of some parameter t. We'll start by specifying y as t, and we'll type in the following expression for uh, x. 0 0.1075 minus 0 0.1075 times, the asterisk is times, two open parentheses, t minus 2 close parenthesis slash for divide 0.5 close the other parenthesis do a caret for the exponent and then 6 slash 4 I could have just reduced that to 3 halves but I'm lazy so I'm going to do 6 slash 4 now parameters these are the t values that we want to be our limits. So we'll graph this from t equals 2 to 2.5. And once all of these four boxes are filled and we click the green check mark, we get a nice looking curve that starts right at the base of there, base of the um, you know top face of the body tube and goes right out to this point in space which is perfectly aligned to that axis. Now we still have, and for this second one, still in the same sketch, we'll still do parametric, we'll specify y1 as t once again, and this time we'll specify x as 0 0.10 minus 0 0.10 times Again, two parentheses, t minus 2, divided by 0.475. Close the other parentheses, caret, 6 slash 4 once again. This time we will go from t equals 2 to 2.475. These are the equations for a power series nose cone with an exponent of three halves. There's our other curve. As you can see, it, it uh, 
begins at the inner diameter of the body tube and goes to a point co uh, coaxial I guess with the other point it's on the same exact center axis here so now to close off the sketch we'll insert two lines one connecting the two base points and one connecting the two end points let's confirm that it's a closed sketch now we'll exit the sketch and select revolve boss base for the axis of revolution you can just click this line and it knows to revolve around the dotted line that just appeared and that yellow preview is exactly what we want and 360 degrees is what we want as well we don't want a nose cone with gaps in it so click OK there there's our finished nose cone okay there's still one more thing we need to do in the spins onto the rocket body so to do this Go to Reference Geometry, then click Plane. Our, we only need one reference for the plane because we're referencing another plane, and that reference will be the top plane. Notice that it says fully defined, but we want to offset by 0.1 meters. That's the preview of our new plane right there. So we'll click OK. So I make sure I'm still recording here. Sometimes I make that mistake. All right, now that we have that plane, we want to sketch on it. So we will select plane one and we'll sketch. We want to select the line tool, find the origin and draw a straight line um, t perpendicular to the body tube at that location and that uh, extends well out beyond the body tube now we're going to draw some more lines that are also perpendicular here and that also extend well out beyond the body tube We're going to do this until we have a nice little cross here. There we go. Now we're going to dimension each of these lines to be 0.16 meters. Actually, no, this is not what we want to do. There's an easier way to do this. We're going to take off that dimension and we're going to delete these lines. The idea is that we want to have a uh, connecting rod that goes through the material, but only so much. We don't want anything to intersect down here. Otherwise, it will get very confusing when it's time to revolve the connecting rods. So instead we're going to draw a rectangle at the <clears throat> let's place that there, dimension it to be 0 0.05 on each side so it'll be a square then we are going to make a rectangle that is centered about the origin and is 0.1 meters on each side. There we go, that's a square now. Let's delete our original square. And now,
we are going to draw some lines. Starting at the origin, place once, or click once to place a line on that uh, edge of the square there. And then place another line outside the, uh, well then start from that point of the edge of the square, then place another line outside there. And we want to do that on all four sides because these are the lines that we really care about. Those are the lines we will be revolving around. Okay, there we go. Now we want each of these lines to be 0 0.11 meters long. There we go. Once those are all dimensioned, we can delete everything else. Sometimes you have to start from the origin and draw lines, do some dimensions, just so that you can draw a line from one specific point in space that's not the origin to another specific point in space that's not the origin. The first time I tried to do this is I just drew lines there and then started from this point and then drew lines back, then tried dimensioning these lines. But sometimes this end point would move and that's not what I wanted. So we will end the sketch there. Now we have four nice lines around which we can revolve. So we will select the revolve tool. You can specify the line as both the contour and the axis of revolution. I'm going to pull up my script again to see exactly what diameter we need. Actually radius is what we need. Here's what this will be entered as. Whoops. Our radius here is 0 0.00375. So there we have a nice revolve. We will repeat this for the other three lines. Actually. Oh, whoops. When we do the revolve, we have to specify a sketch on which to use it on. Sometimes it'll automatically select one for you. I don't know when SolidWorks will automatically select things and when it doesn't. There we go. So the line and the contour are the, or the axis of revolution and the contour are the same line in all four of these cases. Sketch three, there's the contour, and there's the axis of revolution. It keeps the same radius, so you don't need to worry about the value there. There's the contour, there's the axis. Now we have four solids of revolution there. If you take a look at the base, they're all nicely symmetric. Okay, once those four revolves, are the body as a SolidWorks part and create a new assembly. So go to Save As, go to Desktop, um, 
awesome rocket body is what I'll name it and we'll save that so once that's done go to new and then double click on assembly to open up an assembly window open <clears throat> you'll see the begin assembly tab here you can click on your rocket body and notice you'll have one that follows or you'll have the rocket body following around your mouse let's so go ahead and click to place that somewhere and it will be inserted into the assembly workspace now we and to do that we're going to take a little side journey to the internet Go to umnrt.slack.com, you log in, I'm already logged in here, and we're going to get rid of that for a second. We want, you want to click the view pinned items in our Slack channel, and a little channel details thing will pop up. We want shared files, and notice I posted a video for Finn. So if you don't have video for fin in your uh, file database, click to click file reactions, download, and then there's your download. Now once you have it in the place you want, I'll minimize my internet window, you can click insert components, then browse, and then video for fin is what we want. You'll be able to click and insert it. And then you'll need to repeat this three more times. Alternatively, you can open the fin in SolidWorks, and this will automatically be inserted into the open document. So you can just click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. But I'm going to do it the relatively slow way. Where'd that fin go? There we go. Oh, it's way out there again. <laughs> I don't want that. There, place it. All right, there we go. Now we have four fins placed around the rocket in our workspace. And what we need to do is to mate these fins to these connecting rods. Is we go to mate. Then let's zoom in on one of the uh, rods actually. We'll select the face at the end of the rod. Make sure that face is showing in the mate selections box. And we will rotate and then control quick the inside face there, the face at the bottom of that hole. So I'll go ahead and do that. And notice it moved. So yeah, it already moved and it has a coincident mate, which will work for us. We're also going we're going to do another mate concerning these this fin and this uh, rod because we want this to be on that. Uh, we want the rod to go into the hole and the fin to be able to rotate about this rod. And we need more than one mate for that. Now notice our mate selections box is still open. We're going to click the edge of that hole, the outer edge of that hole. And we're going to control click the outer face of that connect. Notice it got moved right on there. And it isn't perfectly upright, but we don't care about that right now. So we'll click OK. And there's our fin on the rocket body. Don't move it because it'll probably mess up the perfect 90 degree angle there and the way we're going to rotate this upright is an ANSYS not SOLIDWORKS so we don't want this saved as a non horizontal fin okay now we need to repeat this for the other three fins I'll do it 
for the fins facing the hole first, and this is what you'll want to do as well, or the fins where the uh, hole on the fin is facing the rod, because that makes things a little bit that makes things a little bit easier. All right, so mate selections will click that face. It's the outer face. Make sure it's a face. You can control, click, and drag to pan. And the middle mouse button is to uh, rotate about the point. And we're going to twirl click that face. There we go. Now those are coincident. So click OK on that mate. Now I'll do the same process for the edge and the outer face of the uh, rod. Click OK for that one. Now for the fins where the um, hole is not facing the rod, but the hole faces the rod. Click on the body that you want. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Let's uh, click close on any additional mates. And so the rotated component, you click the down arrow under move component, you click rotate component, you uh, click about entity for the, uh, hang on. Now let's get out of this. Let's select a component and then let's rotate it. So let's rotate that about an entity and the entity that we want to rotate it about is this line. So we shall click OK for that. Hang on a second. I checked that I'm still recording. I paused it for a while there. Okay, what you actually want to do is select the component, go to rotate component, about entity, select that corner, and then left mouse click to drag the component. You can get a little finicky, but you want the hole generally facing the uh, connecting rod they'll line up when you mate them. So we'll go back to mate. We will select the that face and we shall control after panning over. We'll control select the interface there. We'll click OK on that mate and we shall Select the edge, and then and then select the uh, outer face of that rod. I'm doing this at about 10 p.m., so I'm a little bit tired. All right, our last mate. Well, before we do our last mate, let's close out of the mate box. Let's select this component. Let's uh, move it, ro rotate it about entity, that line, there we go. That's nice and rotated for us. Okay, go back to mate, mate selections, let's uh, click that face, the outer face of the connecting rod, and let's select the bottom face of the hole. That mate is coincident now. Let's select the edge and the outer face of the rod. So click yes on that last coincident mate and then close on any additional mates and then scroll and then uh, rotate around the rocket. These fins should be perfectly horizontal. 
If they're not, you must have... Uh, actually, they should be if you've done the two mates right. And the fins should also be... Or the uh, camfered edges of the fins should be facing away from the rocket. Okay. Now that our fins are all uh, connected here, our assembly is done. Like I said, we're going to rotate these in ANSYS. All the works now. Don't touch or move any of these parts because they're still not fully fixed. Even though that these fins are attached, we still want those perfect 90 degree angles. So we're going to go ahead and save as the desktop. You can name your assembly something cool. We're going to save it as an assembly, and we're also going to save it as a parasol. You can go ahead and save it onto the desktop if you like, or any place that's convenient for you. So all that... Let's do a static structural simulation, just like last time. Go into engineering data first because we'll be using fiberglass for our material. Always get in the habit of naming you know, the materials you'll be using. Whoops. We want yield strength, not ultimate strength. Okay. So Young's modulus for the fiberglass that we'll be using is 30,000 megapascals. Poisson's ratio is 0.21. And compressive yield strength is 750 megapascals. All right, that's it for engineering data. Our material is fully defined. So once we're in geometry, we'll rotate the fins how we wish. It's easier to do the rotation than ANSYS for multiple simulations because we'll already have a rotation feature generated in the design modeler. If we want to rerun simulations with the fins at different angles, it will be easier than going back to SOLIDWORKS and rotating the fins in that program. To summarize up to now, we used SOLIDWORKS for complicated geometry, like the equation-driven curves, and we used design modeler to rotate the fins. So let's import the external geometry file. Uh, whoops, that was... And attach, we don't want it to attach, we want to import. Yeah, store it in my desktop. It's a SEM1 here. Ansys thinks it's PTC Creo that made it, but it's not, it's SOLIDWORKS. Just to double check, the file type is .x underscore t, so we'll generate that import. And there's our rocket with the nice horizontal fins. So after that's generated in the workspace, to make rotation easier, we are going to suppress the main body. So I have the body select tool, or alternatively, select awesome rocket body from the features and suppress. Actually, no, we're gonna hide the body, not suppress it. So that makes things easier to work around in here. So we'll go through the same process for rotation as in video four but we'll create two planes, one for these, these pair of fins and one for this pair of fins. We only need two planes because this plane's normal vector can also be used to rotate this fin because these, um, these fins are perfectly symmetrical here. Or, well, the rods are perfectly symmetrical. Okay, to get started, Let's uh, create a plane. So create a new plane. I have plane four shown there. And I'm going to start right here with this fin. So once we're in the details view of plane four, we will specify it as being from a face. And the base face, make sure you have single select instead of a body select tool. 
well actually the face select tool will be there by default but I was uh, kind of weirded out by the pan tool being my cursor so there's our base face we'll click apply notice that uh, blue vector there is the normal vector we'll rotate these two fins about so we'll generate that plane and we'll do, go ahead and do the rotations for these two fins right now. So to do a rotation, you will create body transformation, rotate. Let's do that fin first. Apply axis definition. We will select our plane. Uh, when we have the actual axis selection box there, apply. There's the plane normal and there's our preview. So the rotation here is uh, clockwise, so we'll go ahead and type in negative 90. And then as you can see, our preview will be perf or is perfectly upright, aligned with the y-axis. So we'll generate that rotation. Now let's do another rotate, but for this fin, the axis definition will be that plane again. And notice our preview is showing up again type in positive 90 this time and we'll generate that see there's our uh, both fins are now upright which is sweet alrighty we will now do the other plane of rotation so we'll create another plane we will Go to the plane, details view, select from face. There's our base face. Generate the plane. Now there are two more rotates. But this time we will be rotating that fin and that fin. Select the plane that you just generated. That big red arrow should show up right on that fin and we'll do negative 90 for this one because remember the rotation is clockwise we'll generate that then we'll do our last rotation and positive 90 this time all right there we go now we have our four fins fully vertical, fully awesome. And now we will show all bodies, there's our rocket. Take a moment to admire your handiwork. So just to put things in perspective here, you now have a fully formed rocket with fins that you can rotate at any, any angle you want. And it only took two YouTube videos, congratulations. I'm proud of you all getting this far in something that's completely optional for you guys. It's really blown me away how you've taken to these videos. So hopefully we can continue. Alright, let's modify the rotation of two opposite fins to point them 20 degrees away from vertical. So let's do rotate 4 and rotate 3 here. We right click then select edit selections. modify the angle to be negative 70 degrees so that this thing's 20 degrees away from vertical we will regenerate and we'll edit rotate 4 and we will type in 70 there and those two fins are opposite which is or pointing you know opposite which is what we want because when air flows down along here, strikes this fin and that fin, the air will be deflected this way, so there's a force that way. And on the other side, the air will be deflected that way, which means a force that way, which means there will be a twisting force this way. So the rocket will tend to roll this way. So if the rocket was already rolling that way, these will control the fin, or control the fin's roll and reduce it. All right, so we'll generate that rotate four. And now we are done in geometry. So I'm going to go ahead 
and close out of this. We're going to go to model. So to optimize the mesh here for about 30,000 nodes, we will be inserting two body sizings. So let's select the mesh, insert, sizing. Go to the body select. We will do the rocket body first. Click apply for that. And we will try 0 0.035 meters cubed. And now we'll insert a sizing for the four fins. We still want it to be a body sizing, so we're going to control click each of the four fins to select them all. We'll hit apply. Element size for these will be 0.01 meters cubed. If I'm doing this right, it should get around 30,000 nodes. There, 29,501. All right, so that's it for the mesh. Now let's specify the materials fiberglass. It's good to do this early on before you forget. And I only say that because I keep forgetting. So let's control click all five of these. Actually, we'll select one first, then control click all five. We'll go to the Aero Nexus Structural Steel, select Fiberglass. Now notice that these are all assigned to Fiberglass, which is what we want. Now we'll insert some forces. We will do these on the fins that the, um, excuse me, faces of the fins that are tilted, specifically the upward facing faces of the fins that are tilted. So we'll click apply for the geometry. Try to click as close as possible to the axis that's defined by the connecting rod. We'll specify our components. Notice that plus y is the direction along the length of the rocket, so we'll do negative 800 newtons for our of the force because the air will be striking thin with in purely that direction. Okay now actually that's not quite accurate. The air will be striking the fin in that direction but there will be a different force component as well. So in this case, there will be a force in the Z direction as well. So we're going to specify that as about a fourth. I'm just making up these numbers as I go to help demonstrate the effects that, this, that these forces are going to have on the uh, connecting rods. Because those are the main things that we care about, at least so far. In future videos, we'll uh, study everything else in more detail. But right now I'm kind of focused on roll control. So the fins are important and the connecting rods are very important. Okay, we're going to insert an equal force on the other side as well. Once again, we're going to switch that to components. We'll do negative 800 newtons for the Y and negative 200 newtons for the Z because you know as you can see the uh, air will exert a force this way as well. Okay, now that our forces are specified let's do some fixed supports because we don't have any fixed supports there will be unconstrained rigid body motion which will cause the solver to be very mad at you. And we are fixed supports will be at these shafts. It's going to insert some fixed supports and we'll select these faces. 
we'll do individual ones for the fins. There's another, there's another, uh, oh wow, this, uh, kind of hard here to zoom in, pan in the right way, but that's kind of a side effect of this program. Fix support, go to single select, I'll do one at each of the interfaces of the rods. Okay, I'm going to switch that direction. A useful way to check where you've put your fixed supports is to scroll through them in the list. Notice there's a little box there that will tell you where your fixed support really is. Okay, so I need to do one there. All right. And this will not be our last fix support. We're going to make sure that the whole rocket doesn't move, but the motion's all relative. So it's safe to assume that this doesn't move during the force analysis. Okay. We're done with the setup here. For solutions, we want a force reaction at the bottom. It's going to go to probe, force reaction, put that straight at the bottom. Actually, we specify these by boundary conditions. So this is fixed support five at the bottom. Notice that it popped up right there. So we're good there. And we want to insert moment reactions on the fixed supports corresponding to the tilted fins because there will be an uneven torque as a result of those forces, namely those Z components. Alrighty, their uh, moment reaction is also a probe. So we will specify that at fixed support two. Go to boundary condition, boundary condition, fix support two. We'll insert another one at the, I believe it's fix support three. Yeah, fix support three. There we go. So now that that's there, we will insert an equivalent stress and strain tool. And we shall solve. Shouldn't take too long. And there we go. The solution has occurred with no errors. Look at the uh, force reactions, the moment reactions and the elastic strain and elastic stress or equivalent elastic strain and the stress and those those fins are super deformed right there but that's because this is 10 auto scale so this is underformed we're going to uh, uh, use ISO we're going to use the box zoom and then we're going to take a look at this in better detail Let's switch between undeformed and true scale. Notice the deflection is a lot bigger than the last video because those connecting rods are awfully small compared to the forces being exerted on those fins. So that's why we really care about this part of the rocket, at least when it comes to roll control. And to get a better view of the stress, this is what you want to uh, zoom in on. And the elastic stress is or the equivalent stress is really quite a lot, 8.9 times 10 to the eighth. And in reality, that would probably, uh, actually, 750 megapascals, that's, this is slightly above the yield stress of this material. So 
we want our connecting rods to be something stronger than fiberglass, or at least something that won't break as easily as fiberglass. That's the difference between the strain. So let's notice that the strain is quite a lot, 0 0.032 meters per, uh, you know, meter of uh, uh, material. Yeah. All right, I'm pretty tired, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. But next time, we will prop. We might do a fluid sim problem, or we might combine everything from five videos with this geometry. We might add, say, a motor casing in here, and uh, maybe an avionics bay. We might do a more complete CAD model. We might do some more stuff in SOLIDWORKS, but most of the uh, things that we'll be adding are cylinders, so we might just do everything in Design Modeler. We might add some masses, some more forces, some uh, thermal conditions, you know, like we did in video two, I believe. Uh, just to model more effects on the rocket as a complete static structural simulation. It'd be a nice capstone for everything that we've been doing. And then we'll move on to fluids, which is a very exciting topic for me because I'm doing fluid mechanics right now. All right. Until then, though, have a wonderful rest of your day.